Let's go, Larry! Strike three! Were you thinking about that silly baseball game again? So you really think your life would have been better if you'd hit the ball, huh? A lot better. Hitting that baseball has spun your life off in an entirely new direction. Your life's been changed. This is your house. Those are your children. And Cindy Jo is your wife. Happy birthday, darling. God help me. <laughs> Who do these cars belong to? Well, they belong to you, sir. Get the hell out of here. As you wish, sir. I mean, she's my wife, for Pete's sake. She was your wife. You can't run around mixing and matching the circumstances of your destiny. We weren't married. How can I know that you sleep in an old, faded flannel shirt? Spies. How come I know that every night you brush your hair exactly 86 times? Spies. Ask me something I couldn't possibly know. The day I got my driver's license, I got pulled over for speeding. I want to know the name of the song on the radio. This one. I just want to be with you. Like we were before. You didn't think everything was going to be perfect, did you? <laughs> I guess it just wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be. Are you an angel or something? Not exactly, no. Hi, this is Sam. Hello. Uh, well, just... I getting my thing. No. You can record me. Do you, do you want me to restart? Or do you want that to be the intro to this episode? It can be the intro. Show how chaotic life is. Okay. We're watching a movie together. Mr. Destiny. Mr. Destiny. And let me tell you, Mr. Destiny, who's in it. If Well, first, if you like Mr. Destiny, you'd also like these movies. Taking care of business. The Principal, K-9, K-9-11. This is what they do, though. Separate They're lives. not like movies. They just all have the same Only the Lonely. Yeah. Who's Harry Crumb? Wonderful. Can you know why? Why? He plays a bad guy in that movie. So here's who's in this movie. What? Jim Belushi. Yes. Linda Hamilton. Renee Russo. Michael Caine. Yes. John Lovitz. Hart Bachner. Who? Hart Bachner. Yeah. Bill McCutcheon. Who's that? He plays Leo Hansen in this movie. Perhaps you would know him from Steel Magnolias. He plays Owen Jenkins. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's her dad. Yeah. He's the house she, he gets for the house. Mari Chaikin. Yeah. J.O. Sanders. Yeah. Courtney Cox. Oh, yeah. Douglas Seal. Who was uh, the Sultan in Aladdin. And Santa in Ernest Saves Christmas. That one I never saw. So, unhappy Larry Burroughs sees what life could have been had he made that winning home run as a teenager. This movie is directed by James Orr. Who directed... <laughs> Jesus. The, this guy, James Orr, who directed this movie... I'm going to go through the nine movies he directed. Is he my best friend? Well, I'm going to go through the movies he wrote. Yeah. Okay? He wrote them? Yeah, these are the movies he wrote. Okay. Three Men and a Baby. Yes! Mr. Destiny. Yes! Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. Yes! <laughs> Man of the House. Yes! The one with Chevy Chase. Yes, the one with Chevy Chase. That's the one with... What's the deal? What made you watch that? Oh, Yeah. 
He also directed that movie. Yeah. Yep. So that's James Orr. That's what he did in this movie. Um, let's learn a little bit about the trivia of this movie. Yeah. It's very similar to It's a Wonderful Life. It is. It's like that same movie. Uh, the office building, building that he works in is the former headquarters of R.J. Reynolds. Uh, this is the first of two movies about alternate timelines starring Linda Hamilton. Actually, it's the first of three. Terminator, Terminator 2, and this. Yeah. Her name in this movie is Ellen Ripley. The same, the same name as, what's her name from Aliens? So. This movie is made in 1990. Distributed by Disney. It's a touchstone film. You know who loves this movie? Who? Yeah. And we all love it. Huh. It was filmed in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. It uh, received mixed to negative reviews when it originally came out. Yeah. Yep. It's a totally magical comedy. It is. Yep. If you'd like to watch it and you're getting ready to listen to this, you can get it on Amazon Prime or on iTunes if you'd like to stream it. Ooh, boy, these reviews are not good. Roger Ebert said about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> the plot has been borrowed from unimpeachable sources. It's based on It's a Wonderful Life, which was based on A Christmas Carol. It's about an ungrateful man taking a guided tour of his life and seeing how it could have turned out. Wonderful it's uh, more complicated hearing what it's about than it is. It's a slow march through foregone conclusions. It's the quietest soundtrack I've ever heard. If someone believes that so many movies have too much music, I was surprised to find myself seeing how quiet this is. The quiet and innocent little fable Gross Blossomus is harvested, but to no great moment. He kind of gave it, like, an in-between is what he thought. And uh, we're going to have some drinks. Mm -hmm. What is my wife having? I have New Belgium's Pump Kick. Pump Kick? Which is, uh, I believe, cranberry and pumpkin. Ooh. And I am having a Penn Brewery, which is local Pittsburgh brewery, pumpkin roll ale. Mm -hmm. It's good. They're both good. You try to sip it this one? Mm -hmm. This is very pumpkin esque. It tastes a lot like pumpkin. I'm giving this a little just a little breathe on the nose here. The pump kick is very good. Yeah. It has a very different taste, a more weedy taste than I think they're both good. I almost like this better than Pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> it's because it tastes like a pumpkin roll. Oh. Maybe it's What's the uh, alcohol content on these? Not very much, I would think. Yeah, probably like four or four and a half. It's pumpkin time, everybody. In September. We're recording Tell this. How many pumpkin spice lattes have already had? Huh? I know at least one yesterday. Two. You've had two already? One a day. One a day for the rest of the year. Um, it's a good one, though. It's like a Baby, baby, you do what you want. I The only thing I ask you to do is not watch so many episodes of murder shows. Because then my wife gets convinced. Last night I was laying in bed making out with my wife. And every couple minutes like, nice. what was that noise? Was night, well, that was what was that noise? What was that noise? No one's breaking in. No one's ever broken in here before. Because they know there. They do. So, uh, Mr. Destiny is today's movie. If, uh, have you seen Mr. Destiny? If you have and you'd like to comment, as always, I say this every show. I should just record it and just play the same sample. Leave 
leave a message on Podomatic. You could put it on the YouTube link, or you can email bnsaboutmovies at gmail.com. That said, the other day on Podomatic, we had 50 56 people. listens, which is our record. That was for Rob Zombie's 31. Uh, and not a single person commented? No, not a single person commented. A lot of shares, though. A lot of people were excited to hear about it. Um, we had some nice uh, people say nice things. I think uh, the next episode, I'm going to do a special episode where I just read uh, Sherry Moon Zombie's Wikipedia page. That's going to be my, uh, my what do you call it? Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is I was looking through pictures of them. Yeah. And for as much money as they have, yeah. you know, where you think you would have some money. Being a singer at home. Yeah. They don't dress very well. That's his style. But, like, he, there's designers that sell his kind of clothes that make it look like his style. Yeah. But he still doesn't wear it. Like, he's much more of a Kmart kind of guy. Or garage sales. Kind That's of okay. Guy. Yeah. She was and in She's a... not that great of a dresser either. I think she's pretty. Yeah. But. Outside of her movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think people like that? I think she was a big fan of the Abby Dawn collection by Avril Lavigne sold at Kohl's. <laughs> Is that how you know you've made it when you? When you have a collection at Kohl's, yeah. Or it's how you know you've lost it when that's the only place that will sell your shit. Huh. She was in a movie called The Scissoring, Part Two. Ew. Uh, Sherry Moon Zombie. I'm just just talking about it. Oh. She's not here. Oh, yeah, she's the evil queen in it. Nobody else that... Now, do you think that's her real name? No, think? no, her real name's listed here. What is it? I don't know if she'd like me to reveal it. Cindy. Sherry Lynn Skirkus. Skirkus. Yep. She was raised in Torrington, Connecticut from a young age. She moved to California yeah. at a young age. Was she married before? Um, does not say. Through her 20s, she was a model and a dancer, and she appeared in many music videos. These were mostly for her then-musician boyfriend, Rob Zombie, who she married in 2002. On Halloween, the same year she began acting, landing the role of Baby in House of a Thousand Corpses. That would be teen, same in my movie. She's also in Toby Hooper's The Toolbox Murders. Far the ne- next to her film role, she was in one episode of California Cation, and one episode of CSI Miami that was directed by her husband. She also. Rob Zombie directed an episode of CSI. Yeah. Oh boy. She also has her own t-shirt line. What's it say? Total Skull, her own line of short sleeve and long sleeve t-shirts for men and women, as well as hats, hoodies, masks, bandanas, and scarves. Masks. Yes. Here's some. Her trademark is a shrill laugh. Yeah. Uh, frequently cast by her husband Rob Zombie, slender figure, blonde hair. What do you think your trademark is? Uh, my gut. My laugh. My. What's my trademark? Your cuteness. She was a dancer and model appearing in Playboy in December 2005. Mm -hmm. She was named by USA Today as one of today's top scream queens. The hoodie that Lori Strode wears in Halloween is from her line, Total Skull, which went out of business in 2013. So it's probably real bad. Uh, She's a vegan who quit smoking in 2014. She never wanted to be an actress. However, yeah, Sherry Moon Zombie can quit smoking, so can I. And she will only act in movies directed by her husband. Does it say that that's because that's the only person that will cast her? Or that's what it says. Um, she used to make tank tops under the name Kitty Moon. She loves making clothes. Her clothes are for people that like to rock. Total Rock. What? So are you reading that? It's on IMDb. There's quotes from her. There's still a... Uh, I like to rock. Like, what's his name? Says, or I like to rock. Part of every day. This is the official website of Sherry Moon Zombie. He said I can rock between three and four. Yep. Uh, How come Keen doesn't have 
She has a uh, totalskull.com. Is it still in business? Or it's it just her site. Uh, she also has a Twitter. Yeah. And a Facebook. It's just like a Tumblr page, though. There's not much to learn. There's a bunch of kids that look like Joel dressed up as 31 characters that she's sharing, yeah. Maybe one of them is Joel. It looks like him. And her site just crashed our uh, iPad. Just about. Uh, Let's see what else. Oh, yeah, there's... Some pictures of her. She looks more attractive out of uh, the makeup she does in the movies. I know. But, anyway, we're not going to go to war with these people. I feel like we should sometimes. But, no, we're not going to. We're going to watch Mr. Destiny instead. That's we got better things to do. We have better things. We have better things to do. We're going to watch this movie. She's on the website Who Dated Who. Who did she date? I'm looking it up right now. She has, uh... Oh. Interesting. What? Uh, she has been married for 13 years to Rob Zombie. Before that, she was rumored to have dated Angelica Lewis. Who? Angelica Lewis. Uh, it looks like she's just a uh, American personality. It says. Let me see. She used to date Dr. Diane Carter, Joe D. Messina, Shelby Lynn, Gail Lewis. It seems like somebody that just put themselves on this site. Let me see. <laughs> this lady here, Angelica Lewis. That's who she used to date? I don't know if that's true. I think somebody put themselves. I think you can. Add yourself like a Wikipedia. Because that same person wouldn't date all those famous women. No, I think this is who you want to date. <laughs> no, it's not. It's These are people that, that they've dated. I'm going to look up Angelica Lewis. Now that we're on this tangent. Angelica. Angelica Lewis. So... There's, I think this lady just made herself, yeah, she just made, added herself to this and said people that she would, that she's dated and she faked it. <laughs> Let's look up James Belushi while we're on the, uh, who is James Belushi dated? James Belushi? Yeah. Actor born 1954. James, Jennifer Sloan and James Belushi have been married for 18 years. Mm-hmm. He was previously married to Marjorie Bransfield Ooh. and Sandra Davenport. Ooh. Yeah. This will tell you who's been dating who. He's 62 years old, mm-hmm. a Gemini, three children, and three relationships total. Any other celebrities you'd like to know? No. Who they've been with? Rene Russo, maybe, who's in this movie? This site will tell you. I thought she should marry Dustin Hoffman because they had a very good on screen chemistry. Oh, yeah? Yes, an outbreak. Hmm. She is 62 years old. Mm hmm. She has had one major relationship in her life. Yeah. To Dan Gilroy. Mm hmm. They've been married for 24 years. Yeah. They dated for 18 days. Before they got married. Oh. This doesn't. This site's a mess. They were dating for 18 years after getting together in 1992, and were married in 1991. How do you go backwards? <laughs> yeah. This site. This site. Okay. Well. What? These sites. Mr. Destiny. Mr. Destiny. Yeah. It's ready for you. Okay. I don't know. Who's dilly dallying talking about Jody Messina and who and she's dated? Angelica Lewis. Angelica Lewis. It sounds like when you hear that name, you're like, oh, that sounds like a celebrity. It's not. But it's not. All right. It's pacing. Mr. Destiny. <laughs> Time 
time is now, the time is here. Now's the time for a bite of cheer. A tasty light where the price is right. Well, look at here, you'll dig the sight. The moment's handy for a piece of candy. Just name your brand, they're all so grand. Hey, what do you think of an ice cool drink? Or a big box filled with a popcorn thrill. Let your taste buds meet with an ice cream treat. Refresh yourselves, it's time to eat. So come on, folks, let's join the band as we all head for the refresh man stand. I have a whole folder of movies we haven't finished, like three Dracula movies. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and that's all. Oh, hi. Welcome back to the show. This is Sam. <laughs> that's Becca. And I'm on my way to Youngstown, my wife. But, and uh, I was surprised that we are going to do something. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> H-E double hockey sticks. What? My baby. That's why I put him through hell. <laughs> no. Just, I want some sedentary. I just like a good sit. Give us a taste. Let's rest a bit. Give us a good sit. I live like my grandma. Yeah. And by that, all I do is eat chocolate and drink Pepsi. Mm -hmm. My grandma is 90 years old, and she doesn't eat anything but chocolate, drink tea, and drink Pepsi. Sounds She's good to me. She has no protein. No. She has no carbohydrates. She's made they, of chocolate. <laughs> they bring her meals, which she keeps in the freezer and doesn't eat because she doesn't want them. They, they keep bringing them to me. They keep bringing me these meals, and I'm like, Grandma. Is it a free service, or does she have to pay for that? No, it's a free service. It's really nice that they do it. Yeah. Like, they're, like, nutritionally good, and I've... She's made them for me before. I'm like, I don't want to eat this meal, Grandma. It's, it's for you. And it's for really, the old people. They're really good, actually. They're <laughs> yeah. not, like, Hungry Man TV dinners. <laughs> yeah. They're, like, legit, like... Food. Tasty food. Wow. I... I don't want... She doesn't want anything but a cardboard box. She wants to just sit in the cardboard box. Yep. I often find that a good sit in the cardboard box would be good for me, too. Yeah. My back would feel nice. Put you in the fire. Bum, bum, bum. We're going past my favorite restaurant. Ragtime pizza. Ragtime pizza. Never been there. Bum, I'm going to get bum. it for us one day. I'm going to have to take my dad with me with his gun, though, to go rag, get it. I think ragtime pizza is going to be one of those thick, round ones that are just like, like a Papa John's, but shittier. I think if we ever finish Angel Heart, we should get it. Um, for that, because it's very, it fits rag, with the the time. Ragtime pizza. Well, wasn't ragtime in the twenties though? Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, this is more like the forties, but Scott Joplin kind of thing. Yeah. So we watched Mr. Destiny. Yes, finally. And in between, we've had a Jim Belushi <laughs> week. We watched Carly Sue. Yeah. My wife, I've learned, loves either movies where people die horribly, or movies where Jim Belushi makes good. Jim Belushi's kind of an oafish everyman, and uh, he seems suddenly, like a good dad. But he's like a good dad, but he's got he's got really good qualities, but they're buried by his really bad qualities. Yeah. And then he puts it all together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as a kid, grew up not liking Jim Belushi. Why? Because he was a pale shadow of his much more awesome brother. I feel like he wouldn't have been successful if his brother See, I think died. the opposite, but that's mm -hmm. maybe because of my age. And just I was more exposed to Jim Belushi. I watched, John. I started watching Saturday Night Live when it came on, and I was three. Mm -hmm. My parents were incredibly permissive. Yeah. Allowed me to stay up and watch it. I love the samurai so mm -hmm. much. Well, everyone likes that one. I can't tell you every character, every John Belushi character I loved as a kid. Like, And when he died... It was like, I was six, or no, I was nine. He died in 81. And it was, I remember we were going from Ames. I was Murphy's Mart back then. Yeah. Murphy's Mart to Fisher's Big Wheel, which when it was still open, which is, well, even when took over from that, it's closed now. But there were the two places shopping out. I remember we were on our way to Fisher's and we heard it on the radio, and I just sat in the car, and I was just so sad. Because, like, I never really had, like, John Wayne had died the year before, and that was really heartbreaking for me. Yeah. But, like, never had somebody who was, like, funny, mm -hmm. like, that made me laugh die. And it just, like, it hit me really hard. There's a lot of deaths in my youth that hit me really hard. Like, John Belushi, uh, John Lennon, John Wayne, all the... Mm -hmm. Wow, three Johns. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's what Maybe. this episode's called. Anyway. So, Miss, so, we watched Curly Sue, which is about... He is a homeless father figure to a young girl yes. and how they put it all together and it, I've realized as we've watched a lot of movies this year I hate the hero's journey so much 
Because like the first, because you know inevitably in the first part of the hero's journey that you're going to get to this the the hard part, which is where the hero fails and just uh, everything falls apart. Because I love when things start to get good for somebody that nothing's been good for, and then like I know they take it away. They take it away, and that moment like when he's in jail and just all that stuff. It's just all and they take the kid away mm -hmm. and all that stuff. It's just so, and I know it's going to get better, but yeah. going through that road, yeah. It's really rough. Rough road. It's a rough road. Bumpy road. It's it's a rocky road. Yes. Yeah, I don't like it. Fresh oil and chips. <laughs> Fresh oil and chips. <laughs> Fresh no oil. guide rails. No guide rails. Uh, Lordandlady.com. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know about? Does anybody know about that out there? Or are we the only people? That Isn't it a? You said photography. It's like a wedding uh, planning. Wedding planning site. It's like, hey, if you don't want to go to the knot and you're kind of crazy. I just, uh, this is not to be racist, but the knot sounds like it's for white people and Lord and Lady sounds like it's for black people. <laughs> Can I tell you a horrible story? Yes. Okay. So last night we were wrestling and uh, in the match, Beastman was getting, no, I should have been out with him all along, but it wouldn't have made sense if I was out with him all along. Yeah. So there's one point where he was getting ganged up on and it was uh, three on one. Yeah. So I came out to even the odds up. Now, what should have happened is I should have came out, had a little flurry of offense, and those guys cut me off. Like, I even had a chair at one point. So they should have used their numbers against me. None of them knew what to do. Yeah. Okay? And I'm like, just... So I gave my back, and I never give anybody my back in a match. Mm -hmm. I gave my back, and, like, I'm going to hit Mo Crush with the chair. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to hit him. Because these guys were not jumping me. Finally, they jumped me. Anyway, they're supposed I'll to... I'll dump you. Nah. They're supposed to tie me up in the corner with these ropes. Tie you up in the corner. <laughs> Every time I've ever been tied up in a match, it's never worked. Because, like, unless you have, like, handcuffs that work or, <gasps> or something. Get some. Yeah. I'll talk to my cops down at the Uni Mart and ask if I can have a pair. But you know what I mean? Like, unless you have something that, that's made for it, yeah. it never works. It always looks stupid, and you always have your thumb on your butt. It's just, like, so dumb. So, anyway... I'm upstairs. <laughs> what was that from The Shining? No, oh, that's the thumb the up your butt. Like red rum up your butt. Yeah. Tub, tub up your butt. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, my baby. Snug, snug up your butt. <laughs> so I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs in the locker room talking with these kids about how to do it. All they can find is a rope. It's about this long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I wouldn't uh, even tie up Dean. <laughs> no. So he's like, so he's like, how do you tie up someone's wrist? And I'm like, well, you put their wrists together, and you go. Where was I when all this was going on? This was like my dream, bitch. I, I know, and just and you bind them over. You I didn't said, tell me all this was gonna happen. Yes, yeah, just put them. I'll have them over the buckle. I'll feed you my wrists. Just tie them over, and here's how you do it. Yeah. And this kid was like, a little black Some, kid. Chris is his name. Yeah. He's like fumbling around doing all this stuff, and I'm like, he's like 23, 24. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, have you never done any S and M? And he was like, I did once with a girl, and it made me feel like slavery, and I got really upset and cried. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just looking at him, and I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, I had some cultural identity issues. And I was like, okay, like, well, you could tie me up, and you can get it all back now. And he was like, okay. Yeah. It was the weirdest conversation. I, I, so, like, everybody in the locker room went, it was like needle skip at a movie. Yeah. And everybody went, what? Like, it was like that kind of moment. That's funny. I said you should have been doing the tie-in. Oh, I forgot my thingy. What thingy? The pendant thingy. Oh, I guess we're gonna. Do we have any cash? We can get some. Do you have your pay from wrestling? I actually do. Oh. I was looking forward to saving all of it, putting it in the jar for the year to see how little I make. But I can just tell you that you don't need to do that no, for. It's gonna be an experiment, <laughs> but it's okay. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Curly Sue. Curly Sue uh, was about a dude who was on the streets with Curly Sue. Who he helped take care of because her mother was not in the picture anymore. Was she dead or in Florida? Or she dead was in, dead. Dead in Florida. Yeah. He had had a one night stand with her mom. They threw yeah. that in so we saw Jim Belushi as a feral person. Yes. And then he ended up with What did he guy. say? He was once... Most people get a STD. I got a baby. <laughs> yeah, and then he raised her from a baby, so he was essentially her father figure. He'll be her daddy. Yeah. 
uh, he'll be the one who loves you. And they had come up with all these schemes in the meantime of making money or getting things for free. And yeah. he, on purpose, gets hurt, so he'll get hit by a lady's car and it looks worse than it is. But then he gets hit twice by the same lady. Yes, and the second time was truly an accident. And she feels bad, so this rich lawyer lady takes them into their home. And she starts to see that Curly Sue needs education. She needs taken care of because obviously she's a child. She doesn't know how to read. She doesn't know how to read. She can't spell. So she gets very concerned. And they put this lawyer lady up in the beginning to be like this tough. She is. She's a career woman. She's, she's a, a career 80s, woman. Late 80s, 80s, early 90s. Donna Karen wearing career yeah, woman. She's got a shitty boyfriend. Every, every 80s movie starts with a powerful woman that still has a shitty boyfriend that just mistreats her. Yeah. Yep. And then she ends up inviting them to stay in after a couple of events that happen. She ends up inviting them to stay in her home for as long as they need to to get back on their feet. And she ends up falling in love with Jim Belushi uh-huh. and wanting Curly Sue to be her own. Yeah. And then it happens. Yeah. There's some negative parts of the hero's journey that happen along the way. Yes. Some jail time, some mistreatment in a French restaurant. The only thing that's weird about this movie is... Yeah. To me, yes. there's a lot of slapstick. Yes. There's like a lot. It was ba- I mean, it came out as a kids' movie. Yeah, but there's a lot of like people get punched. It's like wow, wow. Mm-hmm. People get hit. People uh, get hit by like cars and just get back up. Doors hit people in the face and they sell them for long periods of time. Mm-hmm. It's Uh-oh. violence was not <laughs> violence in the eighties. No. So it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> And I think that a lot of kids did these things and got hurt. Andrew. <laughs> My cousin Joel used to do everything that kids did. You know, they would be like, put warnings in things. Mm-hmm. They're like, why would you put a warning in that? Like, put cookie dough in the VCR. He did it. Andrew is the same way. Oh. Me, I was like, mom's going to kill you. Yeah, I <laughs> and I let it happen. You know what? I had such a fear of my mom. That, and I think it was healthy, a healthy fear uh, that I would never do these things. I'd be like, because I would just know, I'm like, that is stupid. Yeah. Why would I? Why would I do that? Like other kids would be like, oh, destruction, embrace it. Well, no, we did things, we did bad things, and we knew they were bad, but we only did them to the point where like my mom would just find out. Yeah. Because if she found out, it would still be okay. She'd be like, oh, you're never allowed to do that again. That'd be it. Probably. But if she told my dad. And I don't really know. It mostly my parents were together so much uh-huh. that there was never a moment where it felt like both of them always knew. And it was like it was more. Would my dad care? Probably not. Well, he would probably just because my dad liked a good sit more than anybody. Um. And he would just be like, oh. "Well, my that's da- the thing. My like dad my dad, had, he was around." Every day, but yeah. he, you know, him and his naps, that's all yeah. he wanted to do. My dad's naps. Hammer, if, if my dad had to wake up and get off the couch to discipline you, you were going to get annihilated. Yep. And then he, he would get upset about it. Yeah. But anyway, so that's the rough. That's my dad, too, as tough as Neil is. And you yeah. met him. Yeah. He oh, not... I met your father, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know him. I think I've met him. Yes. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. technically related now. He's my father in law. You're. Part federal, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I'm in the fam. Yeah. As he said, he said, I have been accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Uh, your dad would get upset when he would disappoint you. Yeah, as tough as he is, he would, he would say, well, I told you not to do that. <laughs> He'd get sad. And he would blame us. <laughs> like My dad just had the, the threat. It of, was our fault that he was beating us. <laughs> no, my dad had the threat of the belt. Mm-hmm. He would take a loop at a time. Yeah. And if if I take this off, I'm hitting you with it. And and for me, mm-hmm. I had a big imagination. I'm not saying Noah does it. Noah's yeah. more cunning than me. Yeah. I would be like, oh, if that belt comes off, it's going to hurt. And I would imagine all the ways it would hurt. Yeah. Noah was smarter in a more street smart way. I'm more smart in a fanciful little word Fulroy kind of way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I sit in my room and dream of imaginations. And Noah was out there on the streets. And when I was he was like, younger look. than you. Yeah, Noah was like, look, he's never hit me with the belt before. He's only threatened. 
Obviously, yeah. he's never going to hit me with the belt. And then he would push it and push it until finally he would get hit with the belt. You hear one crack, mm-hmm. and then you see my dad walk out of the room crying, and Noah would, Noah would either be upset, and then after a while, he's like, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. And then he got used to the belt, whereas I heard the sound and imagined it was worse than it was. Yeah. So, my dad would always also take Noah upstairs to a room. It was like, a, <laughs> it was like go a to the, room. the gas chamber. <laughs> If you had to go to my dad's room, like it was like his closet room, bedroom, Uh-oh. bedroom kind of room for the longest time <laughs> while Noah was still home. That was my dad's room and it was all padded. Yeah. It was like my dad snores so loud. Yeah. They just put like a twin bed in that room. It was freezing in there. What is he and Frank? <laughs> well, no, because that's the room they kept the retarded kid in before my parents got Oh, God. Because they had like a kid that they wouldn't, because you know, in the 50s. Yeah. The richer people that live in the Is house. Is this still going to work through the tunnels? Or oh, should yeah. I have stopped? No, it, it works. Okay. It's just on the um, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so they kept the, the mentally disadvantaged child in that room. Oh. Yeah. And your father. <laughs> no, it's just my dad's room. Yeah. But if he took you up to his closet, because that's where he kept his belts, mm-hmm. he would get a belt out, and he would, like, snap it like that. Like, yeah. ah, and usually that was enough to get you to settle down. Yeah. And that's, no, it just got mouthy. Yeah. And then we just... Like, today. <laughs> it never... I don't know what positive change is. To me, it just made me fearful. Yeah. So I worry all the time. I've spent my entire life worried about getting in trouble. <laughs> I had a dream last night that I was in trouble with my boss. I woke up screaming from it. Yeah. All the time. Um, I've, I've built father figures, authority figures in my life and fear them. Um, and really, I probably know more than a lot of authority figures. How are we going to discipline our future, child? Straight up smacks across the face. <laughs> I think we just have to agree with him. Yeah. I think occasional corporal punishment. Like yes. Smacking. Is good, but not. I see a lot of parents just do random butt smacks. Those women in like the stores. Yeah, and also not. Oh, my whole thing is, and I see this every day because I'm in the, you know, Walmart or wherever. Yeah. Especially, I mean, in Walmart, anything goes. You can beat your child with a baseball bat in there, it doesn't matter. Oh. I've seen it. Yeah. But when I go to other stores, like a mall or whatever, these moms come out with their three kids in a, you know, stroller and want everything to be perfect. You have three little kids. It's not going to be perfect. They're animals. Like, and you can tell on the mother's face, like these yuppie mothers, that they are livid about what's going on. But, you know, oh, Kenzie, don't do that. Don't. That doesn't work. No. I'm here to tell you that doesn't you work. You know what works? Yeah. When we get home. Yeah. Act all you want. Act up. That's fine. Be how you want. When we get home. And my mom would just I say, just think you have to keep up with home, it, even when they're little. And it's not because she's two. You need to tell her no then. You need to always say no and not give kids anything. Yeah. So that when they get moments, short moments of bliss, they re- you need to set them up that life is horror. That's but you know, see, that's the thing. Like, we talked about it. We kind of only want one kid. That's an only child. Do you think he or she will be spoiled? I do. They'll be spoiled somewhat. <laughs> I think they will not want for anything. But no. they will also know how to share and how to... Exactly. Because, like, I, I, won't, I won't play. Well, I mean, my husband takes very good care of me. Like today, for instance. But I can only imagine how he would take care of a baby. That baby's gonna... That baby's gonna be his daddy's baby. Yeah. I can see it. But, anywho. Mm-hmm. I, I think... Ironically, from being a homeless child, Curly <laughs> Sue, because like she learned life lessons. Like she tried taking that money out of the, the uh, well, he told her ahead of time. He said, steal. We don't, we do this, we do this, but we don't steal. Like, she had a lot of money in her purse a lot of thousand dollars. My Uncle Billy used to carry money around like that. Like, when he was a kid, like, he would. I don't think my parents ever did. No, my parents never did either. My dad has a giant wallet. There's not much money in it. Your dad's wallet is full of shit. You know what's it's funny? like this. You know what's funny? That is the slimmed down version of that wallet. When I was a kid, my dad had. What's he got in there? Wallet. He would just have so much stuff. His wallet was like. It was like a brick. I. He, when I was a kid, he had to have so, so you much. saw my dad's wallet. He has 400 pictures from 1986 oh, yeah, in there. Oh, yeah, my dad's wallet. Well, I, I tried. The closed. No, you can go that way, though, because oh, okay. you're going to take veterans. Oh, okay. Um, 
Liberty Bridge caught on fire. And they keep saying it's every week, not opening, not opening. I mean, it takes them fucking how long to do this? It's gonna, That's it's gonna be a gonna, year. Yeah, it's gonna be a year. Traffic in Pittsburgh in the morning, horrible. It, it affects every single direction now. Because well, it does, because no matter which way you're coming from, even if you don't take the Liberty Bridge, all the people who do are affected and they're in your way then. Well, the first day the bridge was closed, it took Matt to work two and a half hours to get to work. He got caught in the middle of it. Now what he does is he goes the whole way through Green Tree, yeah. comes up through Mount Auburn, and comes yeah. through the back way. You have to. Yeah. Take Bigelow. Well, with me, like... It's probably an extra 10 minutes, but like for work and stuff, I just go to the turnpike. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm avoiding all of this and going around it. I was going to tell you on the way home, like from my own stuff, just go the whole way to the turnpike and then take big one. Look, see, we're in it right now. Mm -hmm. This isn't that bad though. Yeah, but still. I know. On a Sunday, too. There's a game today, isn't it? There is at one. Yeah, there's a football game. But is it here? I don't know. I, I don't know. Not that it's, it in, it's them against Cincinnati. I know that. Yes. I only know that because Harimbe uh, jerseys were not allowed to be sold by the... Uh, Who the, is that? The gorilla that got shot in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. That's right. Harimbe. So everybody I mean, was trying to talk get... talk about this person. Like, I'm like, who's he? Everybody wanted to get Harimbe jerseys to wear for the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, the NFL won't want, that's one of, the, they have like a filter set up so that you can't order jerseys that say stuff. Yeah. And that's one of the things they added this week. Oh. Yeah. Can I have it say Sam's Girl? Yeah. Oh. Look at that. Now Michael Vick played for them. I will never wear a Steelers piece of clothing again. Who day? Harimbe. That's what the other shirts I are. just, um, so appalled. That's good. They don't give murderers a chance to play football. That's hey, the same what? thing, in my opinion. If you don't, here's what I love about football. You can, you can beat kill, your wife. You can beat you your can wife. Kill people, kill animals. Kill, but God damn it, if you don't stand up for the national anthem, people are going to set your jersey on fire. You do not make a protest. Go ahead and kill everybody. I think everything in this country is too glorified. Oh, everybody's getting what they want. And yeah. yet nobody is. Exactly. <laughs> do you like them. all these dick faces that are going to go down to the end and try and get in? Oh, there it is. If you let one of them in, I'll get out of the car. That guy was just standing up on his bike. He oh, like, yeah. He's did you see his outfit? Fast and the Furious. He looks like a mime from the Cirque du Soleil. Maybe that's what he is. Maybe he's practicing. Here's what Mike I hope he dies. I have a Cirque du Soleil question for you. Yeah. You're from... I went to a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. Most people in middle America yeah. love Cirque du Soleil. Wouldn't yes. you agree? Yes. Like people come from like All the over. Bible Belt and they're like, oh, we saw Cirque du Soleil. It was wonderful. Yes. These are people that hate gay people more than anybody else. I know. Yeah, Cirque du Soleil is without a doubt. Most of it, to be honest, when you look at the programs, yeah. there's probably out of like a cast of 50 people, yeah. 10 adults and 40 children. Oh, yeah. Like everybody, the that most of the kids yeah. are like 16, if not younger. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like everybody's in the stockings. And it's creepily uncomfortable. That's I art, I guess. Um, you know, and they're just excited to be getting culture. I guess. It's just mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. That's Andy. It's Keyboard Cat. Yeah. There's a billboard now if anyone knows Keyboard Cat. Ooh, that's actually the second Keyboard Cat. Yeah. The original Keyboard Cat died. No. Yeah, well, he was like 20. Mm. But I love keyboard cat. Yeah. Anyway, I guess we should talk about Mr. Destiny. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Destiny is another <laughs> Jim Belushi movie. And it's I Jim hear Belushi. your view on this. Yeah, it's so set up everybody with Mr. Destiny. We already did the opening, but just let's remind them what it's about. It's just he always wonders what, you know, he's stuck in a job that he doesn't care too much. You know, go to his 30s or 40s, wherever he is now. Yeah. He's in a job he doesn't like too much. He always felt he could do better, you know, that kind of thing. And he still bases it off of a baseball game that he ended up losing for, like, what was it, middle school or high school team? Yeah. And if he would have just hit that baseball, what would have happened, you know? It's a very... He would have been the hero, and he would have gotten more out of life. So, chance encounter with Michael Caine, who's like a guardian angel type. 
he fixes it for him so that he could see the other side what would have happened yeah and he's thrust into a life that at first he's like this isn't my life this isn't and he comes to realize what's going on and plays along for a little bit yeah along the way he realizes um that everything was perfect to begin with yes and he should have never wanted to change it because he lost all the things he loved and then he fucks up his new life Mm -hmm. by trying to get back his old life yeah I don't know we're going past an accident now I don't know how this happened but wow that accident was amazing it was somebody I bet you money doing what I just told you trying to cut in at the last minute and smash this isn't a very big space we're on probably smashed in together so this movie was more complex and opened more issues than I think the filmmakers originally intended yeah. On one hand, it's very much a time travel movie. Yes. And that it presents an alternate timeline. Yes. In the alternate timeline, and this is very much based on the way American males see the world, all based on high school. Yeah. And peaking in high school. Yeah. That if he had just done better in high school, his life would have been perfect. And girls, I don't think, give a shit about high school. It's a fun, it's a fashion show, It's that's what it is. Popular girls do. Yeah. And I... I realized, to be honest, the popular girls weren't in school that much, let me tell you. No, here's the thing. I realized when I was young, smartly, I think, mm. was that I hated school. All I wanted to do was graduate high school, get out of my hometown, and go do stuff. Yeah. And I realized that if I didn't play football, if I didn't go to prom, if I didn't have these things, what was important to me when I was young was yeah. drawing all the time. And, and doing art and doing things like that because that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like they would, I remember t- my dad's counselor said to me, well, you're never going to make anything of yourself because at that point, I still well, either wanted to, do, I wanted to either do special effects mm-hmm. or advertising or graphic design of some nature, which kind of is where I, I guess I ended up in graphic design, you know, advertising. Yeah. And he said, well, there's no way you can make a living in I don't know why. And I said, well, I don't want to take any classes mm-hmm. that have any... I don't care about science. Yeah. I don't care about these other things. I just only care about stuff that's going to get me ahead of my career. Yeah. Anyways. But I think so many people peak in high school. Yeah. The people that were really popular in my high well, school. Well, when you think about it, back in the day, like, my mom married her high school sweetheart. That was much more popular. You're still in love with her. Hashtag. I know. <laughs> that's still more popular back then than it is now, you know, or more common. I know one of my friends married his high school sweetheart mm-hmm. in their divorce. That's the only one that I know. There were... I have one friend that married her high school boyfriend. There's, well, two. And yeah. they're still together. Yeah. But that's because... Do you think that popular I don't culture think... has impressed that on people? That, that you could do that? Or do you think it was something that actually happened? Or do you think that the way American morale worked is that you had to be with the first person you slept with and hormonally challenged teens... To be honest, like, I think that they do love their spouse a lot, Uh but I think it's also a lot of laziness. (laughs) Yeah. Because these same people still live in the same zip codes as their parents do. I think... Like, it's it's laziness and it's wanting that comfort of, you know, the same thing over and over again. But I also think that my parents left, went to college, and they came back. But I think back then, it was a little different that you could make a life in a small town. Yeah. Versus today, it feels like you can't. You can't. They feel very stifling. Yeah. Like, I don't think, especially with the mills and how, I'm just speaking of my hometown, I don't think Elwood City felt as stifling in the 70s. As, as it, it does now. As it does now. I think now you have to get out. You can go back there and live there, but you have to work in the city. But I told you, like, when we went back to Livonia and stuff to visit, I'm like, I could never live here. Yeah. There's nothing there that attracts me to it anymore, and it's just so funny to me that I lived there, you know, the first huge chunk of my life. Yeah. And thought it was okay. (laughs) My wife can't stay in the same room for more than No, I can't. I'm shocked she stays with me. Hey. I am. My wife doesn't get bored of me. She gets bored of everything else. She'll never get bored of you. Okay. Love you. I love you. Very Very much. (laughs) But it's like that's town felt like out with there's one business 
Yeah. The uh, sporting goods company. <laughs> yeah. Is the only thing. American. Everybody, his dad worked there. His wife. His wife, his best friend. Yep. Everybody worked there. Now, here's the other thing about and The popular guy in high school, the popular girl, they owned it. Like, yeah. it was just, you know. Here's the funny thing yes. about this school. This school, this town. His wife that he was like, do I have a hot enough wife? Is 80s Linda Hamilton. Yeah. Arguably one of the most attractive. She's the beauty from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And they, I like how they try to dress her down. Yeah. Also, young version of her. I made her goofy because she was never really goofy. A young version of her? Yeah. Way hotter than than all the other kids. Like, <laughs> I know. Is she supposed to just be like the goofy girl? Well, I told you. She looked like, like she was 25 when they were in like, middle school. Like, and since this is the 80s, like, that girl's got short hair. She's unattractive. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Anyhow, so he, back in high school, he misses this pitch, mm-hmm. and he sees a flash right before it happens, which is never explained. Right. I think. Yes. The Michael Caine's character is a coyote god, the Native American coyote god. Yeah. Who's the trickster, like Pan? Oh. And he just likes to play with people's lives. I don't think that. But he was very nice, though. If he was well, a trickster, trickster god, he would have been mean the whole time. No, the trickster god creates chaos within one's life in order to move people forward. Yeah. So he's not me. Uh, but, that said, this is a very guy movie. This is my theory on this movie. Yeah. What is Jim Belushi's biggest thing is, and they know all guys are like this, and guys are assholes, right? Yes. Let's admit that. But he is so into uh, Rene Russo. Yeah. And maybe it's the 80s. I think the bigger your hair was, the curlier it was. <laughs> but, and this is personal preference again, maybe. Yeah. And maybe you don't see the forest from the trees. Yeah. When you're married. Linda Hamilton, a lot harder than Renee Russo. Yeah. I'm just saying, Renee Russo's attractive. Yeah. But I never found her, like, Linda Hamilton attractive. Yeah. Even Linda Hamilton all buffed up, doing curls, being a maniac in yeah. Terminator 2. Very attractive to you, i Okay. Yep. So I don't understand that. Skynet. <laughs> she also dressed better. I liked her wacky outfits much better. But that's what you're drawn to, hence your wife. <laughs> no, I know. But still. Okay, so anyway. He is like You might like me to wear the occasional suit just for something different, but yeah. I think that I dress more like that than But he's like boner crazy. Yeah. Like he's like uh all into Lynn Hamilton and he's all into Courtney Cox. Let's be fair. Courtney Cox at this time, Masters of the Universe dancing in the dark video, pre-Friends. Yeah. She's much better uh, looking. What do you, uh, what's that Jim Carrey movie she's in? Um, Once Bitten. No. No, she wasn't in that. She's in, uh... From back then? She's in uh, Ace Ventura. Yes. She was, like, always, like, the kind of hot character in these movies. Yeah. Maybe not Masters of the Universe. Yeah. But, like, she shows a lot of legs. She's, like, she's like the tough, like, kind of evil girl in this. Yeah. Crazy girl. Yeah. This. But he's all into her, too. He's all into these women. But here's my theory. Yes. Michael Caine is, like, a guardian angel, right? Yeah. And Michael Caine's like, look, I'm going to nip this boner crazy in the butt. <laughs> yeah. All this dude thinks about is having sex with other women other than his wife. So I'm going to put him in this life where he gets to do it. And this way... A little bit. He gets to get the poison out. Yeah. He gets to sleep with a Rene Russo. Yeah. He gets to sleep with a Courtney Which Cox. part of me, at the time, like, he still knew that he wasn't in his right life. Yeah. But he still had sex with her. Yeah, which, okay, I'll, I'll get to that uh, in this theory. And then he's like, look, I'll let you get that poison out of your system, but then I'll also let you see the ramifications of that. Yeah. I think as a guy, this is when you achieve maturity as a guy. Yeah. When you look at another woman and you say, yeah, she's really attractive, but all the craziness that would ensue were I to sleep with this person. And then you say, I'm in a better place. You do that yourself, and that's how you become more mature. Yeah. Versus a Jim Belushi who's like, I need to really get it to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Michael Caine's like, God, he is never going to get it. I'm going to have to do this for him. <laughs> but, yes, and he says to him later, he goes, you realize that in this timeline, she was a very faithful wife. Yeah. And you're putting your throat on this stuff by trying to get back to your other wife. So, 
In both timelines, mm-hmm. Jim Belushi only wants what he can't get. Yeah. He either wants the Rene Russo in timeline A, the real timeline. Yeah. He either wants Rene Russo and Courtney Cox. Yeah. In the other timeline, he has Rene Russo and Courtney Cox. He just wants his wife. Yeah. Jim Belushi is a guy. He can't. He doesn't know what he wants. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know the things that I care about are my wife. Yeah. And uh, my dog. Yes. Really, I want out of life is what I got this morning. Laying in bed with my wife. Didn't have to be up at on at a certain time. Uh, cut on with my wife. I want poop. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> my husband has to poop every day or else there are ramifications from that. What are the ramifications? <laughs> you get gas. You get... Does Angriness, that, tenseness. You're like when babies have poops in them <laughs> and they turn all red and they get like flustered. Yeah. And like my mom told me one time, I remember one of the t- first times we ever babysat like somebody's kid and I was around, you know, for that. Yeah. My mom, it was like our neighbor's baby, like little baby. Yeah. And so my mom watched her for her for a couple of hours while she went out. And my mom had this baby on the dining room table and she was holding its legs and like doing this motion. Yeah. And I said, What are you doing? I was little. Yeah. And she said, This, you have to, the baby's got gas. You have to help it. And I'm like, What? (laughs) And I said, You're trying to make that baby fart. And she said, Yes, this is what you have to do. And she's like, I did it to you too. And she, brother. And I was like, Oh, God. I thought we just banged my head off the table until I wanted. My baby. Sometimes (laughs) I try it on him and it works. I push his legs in and out, oh. and he he is more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, back, <laughs> back to the point of this. I think that there is a moral here, but hidden within that moral, obfuscated within that moral, is that Michael Keaton lets him sleep with someone that isn't his wife. Mm-hmm. And he gets away with it, and he still learns a life lesson. Yeah. And then later, like, he gets all kind of, like, guy about it whenever neighbors is like, I wish I would have had something for your birthday. He's like, you already gave me so much. And he's like, I saw her in purple lingerie. Yeah. And then I told my wife what he did to her. My wife got home. Yeah. I said, he raw dog bone that. <laughs> Which no one in the world knows what that actually oh, means. All the guys that listen to this right now are giggling. Of the 16 to 17 people that listen to this. If you were to talk to your guy friends, would you tell them that you raw dog boned your wife? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I don't really talk about that with my friends. Good. It's not It's not their business. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. Mm-hmm. And I do. Oh, okay. uh, so, I, that's the part of the trouble that I have with this movie. Yes. Is that he basically always wanted to cheat on his wife, mm-hmm. and he got to cheat on his wife, and then he got away with it. Yes. Michael Caine's a little rough around the edges. I did like the end of the movie, the best part, because like they had set up a bit earlier, and whenever he first met Michael Caine, he's like, "Have I ever met you before?" And he goes, "No." He goes, "Oh, you're that kid." Michael Caine knew him. He didn't know Michael Caine. Yeah. And then we went backwards in time to when the to when he was in the stands after losing, and he met Michael Caine. But Michael Caine, I think, here's the crazy thing, right? Yeah. Michael Caine is like Dr. Manhattan in The Watchmen. He yeah. exists on all planes of time concurrently. Yes. Versus everyone else in the Mr. Destiny world lives on an A to B timeline. Yes. Like they experience time in, in, uh, as it happens, right? Yes. They're not allowed to go back and forward in time. Michael Caine can go anywhere within the time stream he wants to. Does that make sense? Yes. He's non-linear versus everybody else is linear. So after putting his life back together, Michael Caine goes backwards, yeah. fixes time, creates the flash before the pitch so that he misses the pitch, and then sees him in the stands and says and tells him that his life's going to be okay. Yeah. And he's still a grumble. And yeah. He's like, "What do you know, old man?" But once he gets to the time in his life where everything's good, he's going to go back and relive that entire timeline, go back through, have to make the choice again, and then pick the right, uh, obviously the right choice, after getting to sleep with her neighbor, so anyway, mm-hmm. and then ending up there. So, uh-huh. so we learn that the life is what you make it. Enjoy the life you've made. Don't want to sleep with everybody else's wife. Unless you really want to, and then your guardian angel will let you, you'll have to... See somebody you work for die. Yep. 
and then you, everything gets fixed. Right. Also, all the bad guys in this were very 80s. They all had their hair slicked back. Yep. That was the sign of a bad guy. The sign of a bad guy. Tortoise shell glasses and slicked back hair. Or you were kind of, you were a trashy guy. Yeah. That's who you were. Not But literally every bad guy in this movie is the worst bad guy. And then yeah. the, the, that one scene though, speaking of acting, uh, the 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 scene where the the uh, boss writes that letter, yeah, where he's like, and he keeps like trying to think of how he'll say his speech. That was a great little bit of acting. Yeah, like he was really good. he was not in the movie a lot. Yeah, he had this scene where he was golfing, and then he had another scene where he was trying to get into the room and couldn't figure out how to get in the room. Yeah, but that scene where he was writing the letter, yeah, it was really nuanced, funny little slapstick comedy. I really liked yeah. it. Yeah. And that guy being a really old actor, yeah. you wonder if that's how he is in real life. Because with younger people, you could tell, like, they're acting or they're good, putting on a show. I think he was just a good actor. I think so. Yeah. I think that he did, a, that was a really nice little little bit in that movie. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I forgot that, what's his name? John Lovitz. John Lovitz. Yeah. I like that John Lovitz in the bad version of the timeline, in mm-hmm. the darkest version of the timeline. Option B yeah. looks younger than he looks in option A. Yeah. Maybe because he looks thinner and he isn't as happy. Exactly. He's the only person that remembers his birthday, but really we find out everybody remembered his birthday. Yeah. Also, Jim Belushi is a walking machine. At one point, he's hallway in downtown. Uh, I assume they live near Chicago. Yeah. He's in downtown Chicago and he walks the whole way back to the suburbs. At least three times in this movie, <laughs> he walks from the suburbs. I'm going to drop my and baby off in Pittsburgh and see how long it takes him to get um, home. It's like Grand Theft Auto. Like, how you set a waypoint and you walk towards that waypoint. Mm-hmm. And, like, this is something we guys will get to play these games. There's yeah. times you're like, you know, I'll just walk. I don't want to wreck another car. That's what it's like. Like, he walks and he's wearing a suit. And it's, this you is don't even I'm, like wearing pants. That's what I was thinking about. He had a suit and a tie and a suit jacket. And he walked the whole way back from downtown Chicago, back to like Schaumburg or wherever they were. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whatever little town they lived in. Came the whole way back, not sweaty at all. No. I would have been dying. I know. I would have had that tie off. I probably would have had it around my head like a sweatband. I know you would have. And I, I would have been like uh, Chevy Chase at the desert vacation, whatever. He's yeah, like, Vegas not, vacation. Vegas vacation, that's what I would have been like. Um, but. How many times have you seen Mr. Destiny? Probably 50. Did you watch it with Natalie? Natalie and AJ. You watched it. Andrew was too young. But it was a movie you guys watched. Yes. The other, here's the other problem I have with the movie. Yeah. In the, the parallel time, in the secondary timeline. Yeah. Uh, in timeline A, Renee Russo and her, and, Con- and Cement Head, her husband, yeah. have no kids. Yeah. Seem to have an okay relationship, and she seems like she's kind of bored in it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How she comes and talks to all the guys and flirts with them. Yeah. And Samantha just kind of grow up. In the secondary timeline, yeah. she's happily married to Jim Belushi. Yeah. And has fulfilled what every woman wants and has two kids. Yeah. She's actually happier in the second timeline, yet Jim Belushi still only thinks of himself. And mm-hmm. picks the second timeline so he can be with his first wife, negating and killing those kids from existence. Yep. Yeah, he is the hero of the movie. Yep. Those kids are also presented as ugly, ugly, <laughs> cappuccino drinking children. Here's what I love about Father. this movie when it came out. They like he's drinking this. He goes, "This isn't coffee." He goes, "It's cappuccino." And in my 2016 Sam timeline version, I go, oh, wait, of course, everybody knows what Cappuccino is. I forget when this movie's made there. I, I'm sure when it came that? out, people are like, Cap a what? Uh, why would people drink coffee and milk together? Mm-hmm. Like today, like if 2016 Sam was. If in your the, wife didn't have it, she'd be dead. <laughs> if I'm in the past now and I'm drinking a can of coffee, people are like, What's in that can? And I say, coffee? Nah. Yeah. Yes, a can of coffee. Is it hot? No, it's cold. You're drinking cold coffee? This world's crazy. Yeah. That's what that felt like. And like he goes, well, it's good, but you kids drink this? We drink it every day, Father. Yeah. Also, he was upset. He also pitched his wife out hardcore yeah. because he didn't get Wheaties. Yeah. In the past. Yet, in the alternate timeline, he doesn't get Wheaties. 
He it's pulled Gary. a little Sam Panico <laughs> no, during the Wheaties speech. I never yelled at you like that. He wasn't yelling. He was, what do you mean you didn't buy Wheaties? <laughs> I've never said that to you about things. I don't need Wheaties. I don't want to go to the waterfront. Well, I also don't want to go places. That's different than not wanting things. <laughs> I've often told you I'm tired. I don't want to do things. Yet, I inevitably soldier on and do them. Because you're a wonderful man. But, yeah, he's pretty much a dick to his wife. No. So, the hero of this movie, a dick, an adulterer, a child killer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he made the right choices because of somebody who would be either be a trickster god or an angel. Yep. So what do you give this movie? Give it an A. An A? Yeah. I give it a B minus. Okay. I think it was good. I think what other Jim Belushi movies are left for us? Canine? Uh, no, no. What's the one with Ray is a dog? Yeah, but it's, it's like not Turner, Turner and Hooch. That's canine. what's his name? Is it Canine? Something blue. Oh, yeah. Can't remember him. I'll look it up on my other phone. What other? We should we'll look up Jim Belushi movies. And we'll see which other ones we'll watch. Cause I kind of want to know what else he's doing. Cause I know he had a TV series about Jim. About yeah, yeah. I watched it. It was actually good. Was it? Yeah. I forget who played his wife, but I liked her. Oh, what's her name from Melrose Place? Courtney Throne Smith or oh, something. Oh, Courtney Smith. Yeah. You know what I hated about Melrose Place? Is that they all worked in an ad agency and nobody did shit. Yeah. And then again, it was like half most ad agencies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you play a lot of a video game? By the way, just a comment, not about this episode. Yeah. I've been playing Just Cause 3 a lot. Mm-hmm. To the fan listening to the show. He was in According to Jim. Yeah. And then he was in, I forgot that, he was in that Defenders show. It was only on for a year, but that's the one they filmed at, um, my cousin, not the law firm she works at now. Yeah. But the one she worked at before that, it was called Cristalli and Sajis in Las Vegas. They were, they did all celebrities pretty much oh. in high profile cases. So like they did, you remember that Ted Binion murder, like Binion's Casino, it was huge. Yeah. Like, they defended the lady who, uh, they were defense lawyers, like, they defended different celebrities and high-profile cases. Yeah. They shadowed them for the show. So Jim Belushi and Jerry O'Connell were in Alexis's office for months at a time, and they worked with them. You know Jerry O'Connell's mom taught Beetlejuice in high school? Taught what? Beetlejuice. Oh, what's her. his name? Yeah. Yeah, that was, she was a special ed teacher, and she yeah. had beat in high school. And she used to take him to their house for dinner. Mm-hmm. It's Jerry O'Connell for a bunch of Yeah. He was in a movie called Red Heat in 1988. Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. That's one of Arnold's first missteps, he said. Curly Sue was 1991. Yeah. Working Stiffs, 1979, with Michael Keaton. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that. Beetlejuice. Uh, Hoodwinked, which was a kid's movie in 25. Or 2005. Yeah, it's an animated one. Wild Palms. Oh, yeah, the TV series. 1993. Show Me a Hero. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Destiny, 1990. Ghost Rider, 2010. He was in Ghost Rider? The Ghost Rider. Oh, Ghost Rider. Yeah. He was in Jingle All the Way. Yes, he was. He was in K911. That was the one with the dog. Yeah. The Principal, 1987. I, I love that movie when it came out. He was in Hey Arnold, the cartoon. He was. he was in Taking Care of Business in 1990 okay. with him and Charles Grodin. Uh, Pittsburgh's up. Huh? Yeah. He was in the Disney movie Underdog. Oh, yeah. He was in Once Upon a Crime, which I'm still trying to find. You'll really like him in there. And that, he's married to Sybil Shepard. Um, she was really... You know what's funny? When she was on Moonlighting, they always shot her with a different one. And I told you, the people in that movie is like all my favorite people in one movie. Uh, Jim Belushi, Sybil Shepard, uh, Sean Daly, what's his name? Richard... I can never think of his last name. He was a commercial guy. Richard... Uh, Richard? No, hold on. Lewis. Richard Lewis. Oh, Richard Lewis. Yeah, from- John Candy. Oh, uh, yeah. And what's her name from Flash Gordon? Aura. Oh. She plays John Candy's wife. Oh. 
you gotta get this movie. Uh, Return to Me. Okay. Who's watching the kids? Uh, who is watching? Joe somebody. Little okay. Shop of Horrors. See cars here, baby? Yeah. Those are the auto show cars. Oh. We're going past the car thing. Is that they, why you cover, can't see they, them? they cover them so nobody can see them. Yeah. And uh, so that uh, no one takes pictures of them. Yeah. He was in a movie called Angels Dance. Uh, Traces of Red. Bunch of kids' movies. He was in About Last Night. He is the best friend in the white yeah. version of About Last Night. That Some, movie is a 12 Hanky movie. Yeah. Visual. Young guys beat it off like 12 times. He was in that movie movies. Gang Related. He was. He's in that With movie. With Tupac Shakur. Yeah, that movie's <laughs> awesome. I saw that. I got free tickets to see it. Yeah. It's like a dark movie where they're both the bad guys. Like, there's no good guys in it. And he was really dramatic in it. And, he, and Tupac was really oh. good in it, too. He's in my favorite. He has that guest role in my favorite Trading Places. Remember he plays the gorilla at the party on the train? Yeah. What is the most recent thing, Jim? He's in Abraxas with Jesse Ventura. Oh, my God. That movie is in, on every science fiction compilation. Uh, Destiny turns on the radio. I remember that. And there was no... Uh, Homer and Eddie, which is him and Whoopi Goldberg. Oh boy, that's a murderer's row. Of he life. was in Jumpin' Jack Flash. He plays one of the, the like the bad guys, the henchmen. Yes. He's the one. He tries to drug her, and she ends up drugging him. Yeah. And he, he remember, she sticks his arm in the car and turns it on, and it starts rolling away. Yeah. So every time he comes after her, he has more. Um, bandages on and more because every time he sees her he gets hurt so in the end when he's trying to get her he's scared of her because <laughs> yeah. he always ends up with a broken arm or something yes. yeah now he had a lot big career and when you think about that how many movies of those does your wife like what's all the most recent movie he's been? um I don't know the timeline was kind of all over the place let me see Mostly cartoons and stuff, and like. You know what's funny? So I was reading an article online the other day yeah. about how an actor is get. Like he was in Snow Dogs. <laughs> you know when actors get like uh, stereotypes? Yeah. And they and they uh, oh, a little ring. Yeah. And they they can't be another role in the movie like Sean William Scott. Yeah. Is always going to be Stepler. Yeah. In movies, well. They talk about how no one will cast him. Yeah. He's been in all the Ice Age movies. Yeah. He's just one of the voices in that. Yeah. He's made millions of dollars being in those movies. So he really doesn't have to do anything. You want me to pause that? Yeah. Yeah, Sean William Scott did all those, does all those voices. So he doesn't really need to make uh, any other movies. He just did that one movie, that dramatic one, that he produced himself, and it didn't really go out anywhere. Yeah. That's, I guess, I always look at people, like, if they haven't made it, yeah, they haven't made a movie, well, I'm like, oh, they're failures. But really, I should look at them and say, like, Jim Belushi, like, maybe he's made all the money he needs to make. He doesn't have to make stuff. He doesn't have to do anything anymore. Maybe he can just do a movie here and again, and he's fine. Maybe, because I, I think the American way of looking at things is, well, you have to constantly be working, right? You make 50 million a movie, 80 yeah. million a movie. And if, if you're doing anything less than being on the top of the world, then you aren't doing right. But, like, Rick Moranis totally dropped out of movies when his wife got sick and, he, and died and he raised his kids. But I think that, too, like, I think Jim Belushi does have kids and stuff and probably yeah. was able to step away at times to raise them. Yeah. Which, to me, that's much better, but... Than dying from a speedball in the Chateau of my mom? Yeah. Like his brother? Yeah. Depends how you look at things. I'm a romantic. I like to think you should burn out early. Baby. I mean, would I want to grow up with Robert Jim Belushi and only did family movies? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Right. Jim Belushi was supposed to be in Ghostbusters. I could see that. Or John Belushi. It was supposed to be John Belushi and Eddie Murphy were the other. And, and, uh, instead of what's the thing? Instead of. Uh, Bill Murray? No, Bill Murray was supposed to be in it, Dan Aykroyd. And instead of Harold Ramis. Yeah, and uh, whenever you hear uh, what's the name there? Yeah, Ernie Hudson. Yeah. To this day, is upset about his role because when he first read it, mm-hmm. Winston, Winston said for him. Yeah. 
was supposed to be just as big a scientist as those guys. Yeah, and he's not. He's like a cab driver. Yeah, and, and he's like, there's this huge thing in the script. He read, and he goes, look, I don't want to be in this movie. He's like the black helper guy. And he goes, I don't want to be in this movie and be the token black guy. Yeah. And I go, oh, no, here's all these. They showed him all the stuff that was written for Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And he was like, good, okay, I'll do this. And the next day he got there, all that stuff was out of the script. And his agent's like, look, we'll put it back in. We'll, we'll figure something it. out. Don't screw this up. They let him have a little bit of science talk, but not yeah, much. Yeah, but, but they said, you know, look, well, don't screw this up because it's a big movie for you. And he goes, and then nothing. He goes, the next movie, same stuff. He goes, I, he goes, I don't even show up until like half an hour into the other movies. And he goes, and I'm always the one getting covered and stuff. I'm always the one going, oh, no, I'm scared. He else. played the retard in, in The Rock's the Cradle. Remember Solomon? Yep. Yeah. The molesting retard. No. What? He did not do the molesting. Oh, I know. I'm just saying that's the preface they give you. Yeah. He's not. He, doesn't he die? No. He rescues him. Oh, yeah. He dies. Rebecca Dick Marnay's in there. Yes. How have we not done that episode yet? Because I made you watch it twice already. There are certain movies that my wife has to watch every once in a while. Or she gets sad, like Hannibal. You know what else is coming up? Gone Girl. That's Gone gonna be soon. Girl. I've seen Gone Girl eight times in my life. More than most people. That is the darkest, most depressing slog of a movie. Well, that uh, murder story, one of the ones I just listened to. Yeah. He tried to base his wife's death like he did it, but he planned it out like Gone Girl, made it look like she did what that girl did. Meanwhile, she's in a burned to death in a tub behind his parents' house. My wife watches the saddest stuff. Last night, we watched The Hoarders, where a guy had so much hoarding when his alcoholic girlfriend died. They couldn't, they couldn't get, get to her. They couldn't get her out of the house, and she'd been dead for days. But you had even admitted that if you were trapped in that room, you'd probably be dead, too. <laughs> well, everybody would. I mean, yeah. literally, it was up to the ceiling. And he was like a mountain climber where he would climb through the ropes uh, to get to them. Nobody thought maybe he killed her. I still think he's Buffalo Bill. I think he did kill her. He looked like, well, this is a deep cut that no one's going to get, but like Zach Weston. He looked like Tim Skelly, the guy that made the video game react. He looked like, whatchamacallit, from Rocky Horror. Riff Raff? Yeah. But with curly hair. <laughs> you know that he's also with Flash Gordon? Yes. He plays, uh... One of Prince Barron's men. Yeah. One of the tree men. Yeah. I was so excited. He, so he was friends with the director. Yeah. And we may have talked about this in our Flash Gordon episode. He was such good friends with the director. All he did was fuck around on set and make fun of people. And he like annoyed every single person. And he would just make fun of the dialogue, make fun of Dio de And he's like, well, he's the director's friend, so he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Which is amazing. Richard O'Brien. I can see that. I love Red Frank. He's my, probably my favorite character in Rocky Horror. Yeah. Because he says some of the funniest stuff in it. And he's so, like, weirdly on the top. Anytime I see a creepy old white guy, skinny white guy at Walmart, I always compare him to that. That's a good, good comparison. Yeah. So that's Mr. Destiny. I think uh, if you see Mr. Destiny, listener, would you like to talk about it? You can email us at bnsaboutmovies at gmail.com. Still have not received a single email from anybody. I'm going to email you. <laughs> Maybe we should say we have a bunch of extra DVDs. Would you like a copy of Hope Floats? We can give you one. We can give. We should have a contest. The I'm first up. person to email us gets a copy of okay, Hope Floats. I'll tell you what. The okay. first person that emails us gets a copy of Hope Floats, but you must do an audio review and send it to us to do as a guest episode yeah. with us. Well, we'll watch Hope Floats, and you'll we'll include you on it. Maybe if you live close enough, you can watch it with us, and we'll hand present you your, your copy, your copy of the movie. You can also comment, if you saw this on Facebook, comment right below. You don't get a copy of Hope Floats if you do that. You can comment on the YouTube link. That'd be great, too. Uh, you can also find us if you found us through iTunes. You can find us on iTunes at BNS About Movies or bnsaboutmovies.podomatic.com, which is our host site for BNS About Movies. Anything you'd like to add, beautiful wife? I love you. I love you too. Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, 
husband. Oh, I'd like to plug my wife. In the great state of Ohio. We're almost there. We're nine miles from Ohio. Yay! Thanks for listening. I'll see you at the movies. <laughs>